It's MasterChef. To win MasterChef, I'd probably give up 99% of my life. Two expert judges to test them at the highest level. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I'm determined, I'm passionate, I want it and I'll have it. This is one tough competition. I think I've got all the skills and the knowledge to become the MasterChef champion. For whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six contestants all want to become the next star restaurant chef. But only one will get through to the quarter final. They face three tough tests. They have to invent a dish from scratch. No, this is very wrong. They have to survive the pressure of a professional kitchen. I've never had a customer walk out because they haven't got their food on time, yeah? And they have to impress the judges with their own recipes. It's tasty. I'd eat the whole lot. OK. And I really enjoyed it. All in just two days. At the end of this, three of you will be going home. Let's cook. It's the quick elimination test. Deciding which three stay are judges Greg Wallace. They want to pit themselves against the best to find out how good they really are. And John Tarode. This competition is about want. It's about wanting to change your life and it's about wanting to impress us right now. The contestants have 40 minutes to invent a dish from any of today's ingredients, including tuna, puff pastry, new potatoes, pork, noodles, pears, red onions, fine beans and green cabbage. Birmingham-born Ian is relying on his instincts to get him through to the next round. I'm comfortable in what I do. I don't feel I have to impress other people with my food. I'll do what I want to cook and hopefully they'll like that. What's your style of cookery, Ian? Um, I don't really have a specific one-off style. I kind of cook as I feel that day. Chuck it all in and see how it goes. Give it a try. Confident? Definitely. Good. London a guy hopes to start a new life and make a career in food. Cooking would be me time. I guess I've probably got about ten years active life left in me before I fall off my mortal coil. As far as work is concerned, it would be good to be selfish for those last ten years. And your food dream is? Uh, a restaurant, south of France, up in the hills, Mediterranean Sea, good service. A remarkably calm exterior, and you are going at a marvellously relaxed pace. It belies panic. No, I don't believe it. I'd love to say I was really, really confident, let's go for it, bang, but I'm a little bit unsure at the moment. I love to cook sweet food, and I would love, love to own either my own bakery or a cafe, and that's where I am now, that's what I want. Despite her love of baking, student Sarah has decided to go with a savoury dish. I've done battered fish and I've got a ginger and coriander sauce and I'm going to do some caramelised beans. Are you able to adapt yourself enough that you're able to conquer all the courses as well as you do sweet food? I'm going to do my very best. 36-year-old Craig is inspired by years of growing his own veg in Cornwall. I've got an advantage because, you know, I've got the ingredients I need to create, you know, everything that I love. You know uh, the ingredients, but uh, are you confident you know how to cook them? Yeah, I think so, yeah. My wife tells me I can, my family tells me I can. Yeah. It sounds like you are quite a confident man, Craig. Thank you. I think we're going to be looking forward to your food. Well, I hope it's nice. Well-travelled cook Susan has a passion for Mediterranean food. When we go on holiday, we tend to spend a lot of time in supermarkets and food shops because the food isn't so uniform in shape and so perfect looking as ours, but it tends to taste so much better. Susan, what are you cooking us? Um, we've got sort of noodles and cabbage and tuna steak marinated in garlic. 
with soy sauce and honey. Is Asian your style? Is that the whole idea? Of no, <laughs> not really. I tend to cook Mediterranean style, but I saw the noodles and I just thought, for quickness, whether that lets me down in the long run. Electrician Paul wants his love of cooking to give him a new start in life. I'm totally disheartened with my job. I want to get into the cooking industry. I'd love to own my own restaurant. I'm going to push myself to the limits for this. You cook a bit, Paul? Yeah. Tell us about time. it. Uh, I'll cook every, every day for me, meet myself and my girlfriend. Tell us what you're cooking for us. I'm doing a tart to tan with apricot, creme anglaise, if I don't burn it. Paul, I hope the food's as good as it sounds. I hope so. Get it on a plate, guys. We have two minutes left. That's it, guys. Leave it alone, please. First up is Londoner Guy. His dreams of a French restaurant rest on his quiche with bread, potatoes and beetroot salad. I mean, I could probably rename it for you, Carbohydrate Feast. It's been a very, very long time since I can actually say that the taste of something is indescribable. I've got coriander all over the place because there's so much coriander being scattered over the top of it. And then this really, really sweet beetroot. How were you able to achieve that? What I got is... Um, Really sweet, sharp beetroot. Actually, I quite like the flavour of. Thank you. And then into sort of eggy nothingness with a sort of coriander finish. Guy, this is not your best work, is it? Uh, it's a distance from my best work. Veg grower Craig wants to prove he can cook it as well as grow it with his pan-fried tuna, creamed cabbage and potatoes. The flavour of the cabbage and the mustard and the cream is really good. And it goes really well with potatoes. It doesn't work with the tuna. Right, OK. Because it is quite a rich, oily fish, tuna, and it just doesn't marry well with the cream. Right. Dessert lover Sarah is going out on a limb with a savoury dish of battered tuna, crushed potatoes and sugared beans. I've got to say, the idea of even dropping an oily fish like tuna in batter and deep frying it is just so far wrong. The sauce doesn't work with the fish. The idea of the sugar in the beans really worries me a little bit. And I asked you before, do you think you're able to, to go through the other side, the savoury side of stuff? Then leave the sugar out. OK. This is madness on a huge scale. I can't, I can't go near that. No, this is very wrong. Electrician Paul has made a pear tart tatin with apricot creme anglaise. It's buttery, it's sugary, it's sweet, it's delicious. When you cook your pastry perfectly, the caramel is lovely about being too sweet and itching the back of your throat. I think this points at someone who does a fair bit of cooking, Paul. Will Birmingham-born Ian's instincts pay off with his pork, caramelised onions and herb potatoes? If pork is overcooked, your potatoes need seasoning and your onions should be really soft. There's some serious mistakes on here, mm -hmm. Ian. The biggest problem we've got is that nothing is seasoned. It doesn't taste of anything, which is going to make me go, wow, Ian can really cook. Yeah. Next time, that's, that's exactly what I'll do. I'll season more, cook less. Despite loving Mediterranean food, Susan has decided to go Asian with seared tuna and stir-fried noodles. It works on a salty level, and I'll pick up the sesame. It could do with something sharp and maybe even a little bit of heat. I don't mind the, the flavouring of it. I, I feel it could be a bit better seasoned. The noodles themselves are tasty. We're going to have a chat. Off you go. 
this part of the competition we always say is one of the most difficult because you're faced with a group of ingredients, you've never seen them before, the lights come on, nerves come out, and it's the first time they meet us. Paul, I think the pear tart to tan was actually good. Really good. It was tasty. And he made a decent creme anglaise. John and Greg seem to like my dish, so hopefully, fingers crossed, get through to tomorrow. Paul can cook. Paul, Paul goes through for sure. Sarah, there is no way you would put breadcrumbs over that beautiful piece of tuna and deep fry it. Maybe I should have gone sweet, not savoury. I also think the big clue today about Sarah's cooking is she said, I put sugar over my beans because I wanted to caramelise them. Anybody who does that, I'm sorry they don't cook, she should go home. Let's talk about Susan. She got some flavour into her food. She did have some sesame there and she had some soy. And she didn't do anything mad like chuck a pot of cream in. It's not great food, but, I, I, you know, the, the lady knew when to hold back. I had planned on going through to the next round, so I would like to accomplish that. Her food was coherent. It was supposed to be a bowl of noodles with tuna on top, with sesame seed and soy. That's what she set out to do. She did it. Susan goes through. Let's talk about Guy. You really want to do something really good and you end up with a plate of carbohydrate. What was the guy thinking? What went wrong was probably my ability to think on my feet quickly enough. I don't think we should let Guy go any further in the competition, I really don't. Yeah, I'm happy to debate Craig and Ian actually for the third place. Ian is a confident man and he had the right ideas. Frying those onions till they were soft and putting them over a piece of cooked pork is a nice idea. I'd love to get through this more so I could learn more, so I could push myself forward more, because it is something I'm really passionate about. Ian was pretty unable to tell us what he cooked all the time or any style he had. There is a glimpse of something nice in Craig's food. The cream cabbage was really good, but the cabbage that Craig made did not match that tuna at all. It should have been served with something else, but hey, is it Ian or is it Craig? Susan, congratulations, you're staying. Well done. Guy, Sarah, sorry, but you're leaving us. Thank you very much. Paul, well done. You're cooking tomorrow. Congratulations. So, Craig or Ian? Congratulations, Craig. Sorry, you're leaving us. Thank you. Shocked and excited and just, I can't believe it. It feels fantastic. I feel really emotional at the moment. I just can't wait to ring my wife and tell her that I got through. Really pleased I got through. Nervous about tomorrow, but really excited as well. For the moment, they can relax. But tomorrow, the pressure is on as they face two more daunting tests. It's early morning on day two. The contestants arrive at Gilgamesh, a restaurant set in the heart of London's Camden Market, specialising in pan-Asian food. Head chef Ian Pengelly has over 150 people booked in for lunch today and needs the contestants to maintain his high standards. We're renowned for putting out a really high-quality product at a very, very good speed, so it's about excellence, but speed. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Pick up, please. Lemon sole, ribeye beef, white fish curry. Susan, who's used to cooking Mediterranean food, will have to show versatility as she's in charge of the white fish curry with trout dumplings. Susan, one fish curry, please. Yes, chef. Susan's first order is in, but she's having trouble getting to grips with the recipe. Chef, we need one more demonstration here, please. Hey, Susan, I've shown you one. Drop what you told her. Susan, you get yeah. oil hot, cream. Yeah. One tablespoon of paste, then you add the coconut milk. Come out. Milk. OK. That's right, yeah? Craig, one ribeye. Yes, chef! Veg grower Craig is making the ribeye beef with miso sauce and soya beans. But Craig's already feeling the pressure and he has to be reminded of how to plate his dish. 
It's not right. No. Come on. Right, sorry, yeah. The sauce goes on first, before the edamame beat. Yeah? Yeah. Listen, it's already been 10 minutes, yeah? Okay. That's 15 minutes, Craig. One ribeye, chef. Okay? Yes. You order two lemon sole. Yes, chef. Across the kitchen, electrician Paul is looking after the lemon sole tempura with orange ponzu sauce. It's a difficult dish to perfect, but he makes a strong start by quickly grasping the technique. He prepares his tempura without any help from the chef, but his presentation lets him down. Messy, huh? Mess everywhere. Is your bedroom messy? <laughs> OK, I don't want to see that happen again. Do okay. it again, huh? Yeah, no problem. Service here, service! It's halfway through service, and Susan's still having trouble remembering how to cook her curry. Susan, you know that's not right. Look at that! It's like soup, more fish. Right. Come on, Susan, you can, you can do this, Susan. Her inability to recall the basics of the recipe puts her seriously behind with her orders. Right, Susan, I need that bloody fish curry. I've never had a customer walk out because they haven't got their food on time, yeah? I don't want to start today. Six ribeye pickup, yes? Yes, 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 yes? With lots of dishes on order, Craig is now struggling to keep up with the pace. Craig. Yes, sir. Yeah, what's going on? It's just a beef dish. It's simple. He's lost track of his timings and his food has gone cold. Come on, man. You're losing it. And he has to start all over again. Let's get it on there. Get yeah. on the grill. Yeah. What's that? Heat? What's that heating up? We heat your meat, yeah. Thanks more beans. Yeah. yeah. It started off really slow, and I thought, well, this is all right. But um, it's just gone manic now. Six lemon salt tempura. While Craig battles to keep it together, Paul's confidence has blossomed, and he's now turning out well-presented dishes. How long for two tempura, please? Yeah, two minutes. Two minutes, great. Really enjoying it. I think I'm doing okay. So that's all that matters, really. Isn't it? After two hectic hours of service, head chef Ian meets John and Greg to fill them in on how the contestants got on. What a great place for would be chefs to come on trial. Down to business. Were you impressed by Susan? Well, she did the fish curry, she got very scared. Her confidence was shot to pieces after the first few orders, and she kept forgetting things. What about Paul? Paul was the one who kept his head down, kept his cool, and he immediately fixed things as soon as I said, this is wrong, this, this is wrong. What about Craig? I think the more orders he got, he just started to panic. It's like his timings were all off. You know, dish needs to, when the dish comes together, you need that ready, that ready, and that ready. He was just back to front. I have to ask you this. If you had to employ one of them, who would it be and why? I think Paul, he's got the aptitude for it. You can see he cared very much about what he's doing. Paul would be the one. Now they're straight back to Master Chef HQ to cook their best two course meal. Yesterday, Cornwall veg man Craig just scraped through and he fell apart under pressure. He's going to have to work hard to prove he's got what it takes to become a pro. Mediterranean cook Susan got through with an Asian dish, but she struggled to cook one in the pro kitchen. Will she go back to the food she loves and pull off two great courses? Electrician Paul shone in the invention test and proved a confident cook in the restaurant. Will he make it three in a row and walk away the winner? There is a quarter-final place at stake. Let's cook. They have just one hour to cook a two-course meal of their own design. Only one will win a place in the quarter-final. After two difficult rounds, Craig is pulling out all the stops. It's a roast stuffed monkfish, stuffed with peppers, anchovy, preserved lemon, sun-dried tomatoes with a drizzle of saffron water across the top. You are playing with extraordinary flavours. It's a risk. I could um, quite easily make it too salty and you'll hate it. We'll just have to see how we get on. 
It is competition. You've got to take some risks, don't you? Yeah. The problem he's got here is he wants to show off some cookery skill, but has he got flavours that would be sympathetic to those beautiful fish? Susan is banking on her favourite Italian dishes to get her through to the next round. What are you making for us? Um, porcini risotto and amaretto and strawberries and tablioni. Is a risotto enough to get you into a quarter-final? Mm, well, that's for you to decide, isn't it? Susan's menu is so very simple. It has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. Halfway, 30 minutes are gone. With newfound confidence, Paul is keen to further his skills by making classic combinations with a twist. Has the quarterfinal door got your name on it? Uh, I like to think so, yeah. And what are you going to do that's going to get you into that quarterfinal? Uh, I've got a herb crusted cod with uh, bay roast potatoes on asparagus, and dessert is a rhubarb crumble trifle. Why do you feel the need to use such an expensive vegetable, which is so powerful, like asparagus, with a piece of beautiful cod? All my friends love it, so that's why I decided to do it. It's classic food being played with a bit, and I think that's dangerous. Should be adding the finishing touches, guys. You've got two minutes left. Time's up. Will Craig's brave flavour combinations win over the judges? He's made scallops with sun-dried tomato salsa, followed by monkfish stuffed with preserved lemons, anchovies and red peppers, with anya potatoes and asparagus. All that beautiful sweet scallop flavour and little hints of tomato. And yeah. I think it's a very, very well-balanced dish. You must be happy. I'm very pleased, yeah. It's tasty. Thank I'd you. eat the whole lot. Okay. And I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Move the main over. The fish is cooked beautifully. The sauce actually is really tasty. The lemons I love in there. The capers I really like. The sun dried tomatoes are a flavour far too many. Okay, right. You don't need them. Right. I don't get all of those flavourings. Okay. At all. Yeah. If you go any further in this competition, it gets tougher. Yeah. Can you cope with that pressure? Do you really want to do that? Of course I do. I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to do it. Will Susan be able to show enough skill with her porcini risotto and a zabaione with strawberries and amaretti biscuits? My feeling is right now, it needs more flavour in the stock. It's OK. It doesn't make me go, Mamma Mia! Mm -hmm. John's absolutely right. It needs to really lift. It's just the stock you're feeding it isn't good enough to make that a great risotto. Main course, two desserts. You can just taste at the back of your palate this yolk of the egg. Mm. And that tells me the egg's not quite cooked enough. You haven't got enough heat underneath there, mm. and you haven't got enough welly in that bowl. Mm. Really need to go. Strawberry and amaretto, what a beautiful combination. Mm. But is that demonstrating enough cookery skill to get you through into a quarterfinal? I realised that was a risk I was going to take, but I went for it. <laughs> Confident cook Paul has made herb-crusted cod with roast potatoes and asparagus and a rhubarb crumble trifle. I get beautiful rich asparagus. I get lovely butter sauce. I get a really nice bit of potato and I get that lovely texture of the crust on top of that cod. Asparagus is perfectly in season at the moment. It's such a luxury item, I think it should be left to just stand alone. I think you've got some nice ideas, and I think you cook quite well. This is not a great dish. This is just component bits that have been cooked well. All right, OK. Bring in Pud. <laughs> you can often see someone's personality in their food. Yeah. You're a big guy. I reckon we have got 
two kilos of dessert here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is an enormous amount of pudding. There's not enough crumble in there to balance the wetness. Right, OK. It's not too sweet, which for me is good. You really want to do this, don't you? Yeah, I do, I really do. I love people smile when they taste my food. It makes my day, you know? We're going to have a chat about you. We will call you in when we've made our decision. It's MasterChef. It is tough, and I don't believe that Susan did enough today to be considered a quarter-finalist. I've done my best to get through to the quarter-final, and I just hope that it was enough. I like a style of food. I'd go and eat it. But it's not demonstrating enough skill to allow us to put her through. She's gone. This is a battle of the boys. That leaves us with Craig, a man who we recognised yesterday of cooking things with intense flavour. And Paul, somebody who is really a classic cook, I think what Paul cooked was good. I think all the parts on his plate were well done. It's whether he can put a plate of food together. Hopefully I have done enough, and if I do get through, fantastic. I'll be, you know, I'll be absolutely made up. His food doesn't need scrapping and starting again. It needs redirecting. But Craig's food is by far tastier. It was a risky manoeuvre to go for strong flavours, and um, I'm really, really happy they loved it. We may get other nice dishes from Craig, but that guy can't handle pressure. Paul was stormed through the first round. He was the first one on our must-have list, and he came top of the kitchen round. We think he made mistakes today, Paul, but if he listens, he will rectify them really quickly, because technically the guy is sound. Decision time. Who's it going to be? We only have one quarter-final place, and we have made that decision. Our quarter-finalist is... Paul. <laughs> I'm gutted. Um, I've been on a real long journey. You know, I've learned a fantastic amount. I'll take that forward and just strive to do better. It's been an amazing experience, one I would not wish to have missed. Made up, really, really pleased. Can't believe it. <laughs> Hello? Hello. I won, I'm through to next week. <laughs> Paul will be back for the quarter final where he'll face three other exceptional cooks.